When we do Botox, what actually you're doing is you're stopping the muscles from moving. And when you paralyze those muscles, you're not exercising them. Right. So it's like with any other body muscles, like, don't we need to exercise them to keep them vital and strong and healthy? So for both women and men, as we age, our skin also ages. That's very clear. The big deal, though, is that our skin on our face and our neck, we care so much about as we age because it reflects like our insides and, you know, how we present ourselves. And so we, we are most concerned about our skin and our face and even our hands. And it's often in our, you know, late 40s, 50s that there's a b- bigger drastic shift in aging skin. And it's partly genetic. It's partly environmental. Uh, it's, you know, our lifestyle habits, history of smoking, but then a biggest change is because of the change in our hormones. So for men, testosterone, for women, estrogen, and its influence on how we make collagen and our, there's a decline in, in how much collagen we, you know, uh, the, the infrastructure, um, how much we actually are able to uh, manufacture And so there's different things that can help stimulate that collagen beyond, let's say, estrogen in women um, and testosterone in men. For example, acupuncture treatments and the medical treatments such as uh, hyaluronic acid and, um, you know, like the UVs and lasers. And so today we're talking about how the holistic, like the holistic approach to this, because Really, not everybody wants to pursue the medical treatment uh, avenue when it comes to skin and aging. And we can talk, we're going to talk briefly about nutrition, what you can do to help with uh, the healthier aging and aging gracefully. So let's talk first about acupuncture because uh, we we offer that at uh, Alive Holistic Health and Gua Sha, which are these amazing treatments that can really generate, um, you know, collagen and fibroblast stimulation. Thank you for that. Now, before I, we do a deeper dive with regards to acupuncture, gua sha and cupping, we also want to guide you towards through my We did an episode, episode 87 on skin, sorry, on skin care. Oh my gosh. We did an episode on skin care naturally, and about how the sun can damage your skin. So that's an important piece that you need to look at at myfertology.com. And the thing about aging skin, you said it already, that the collagen production declines as we get older. And one way it, so what happens is, yes, it can degrade, but then we have new cells that get produced. So the balance is like when you're super young, you have like crazy amounts of collagen fibers that are like helping to, let's say, even help with bruises and cuts. Have you noticed like kids, they can bounce back so quickly from a scratch. It's like, oh my gosh, the next day it's gone. Whereas now I'm in my fifties and if I have a little boo-boo, it's going to last a while. Not that it doesn't heal. But it's like, how can we help the healing process? How can we slow down the degradation of collagen? How can we enhance the collagen production and elastin production? Because the collagen, as it declines relative to it being produced, is may, it may be the thing that helps, or not helps, but that causes wrinkling. And elastin cells helps us to have that bounce in our cells, that glow the rebound, right? And and so that's all important. And the beauty about acupuncture, gua sha, cupping, which I'll address, it helps with that side of it. So even if you're doing medical treatments, or even if you have like a certain skincare routine, it is a great adjunct to whatever the heck you're doing. And I'm going to just go straight into, I have two patients last week that announced that one was... Um, or is 58 and the other is 70. They had been both been doing Botox and fillers for the past decade or more. And both of them last week announced that, you know what, I'm going to stop that. And we're only going to concentrate on, you know, me doing my healthcare skin routine at home and then um, doing the acupuncture and facial cupping and gua sha. And I was just like, yes, 
I, I was, and the reason being was that they saw the impact that it had, because here's the thing, Botox works and fillers do work, but it doesn't stop the aging process. So it's not going to enhance collagen production. It's not going to, you know, prevent elasticity in the cells. And with acupuncture, what we know is by inserting tiny little filiform, sterilized, one-time use only needles that are super, super, super thin along different points in the face, as well as the body, it helps to stimulate the blood circulation, helps to oxygenate and literally can help the collagen to produce again, which is super amazing and exciting. And what do we see like on the treatment table? Like literally I've seen the, like the slight wrinkles go down. This one lady, she has had quite a few number of injections to the point where she's starting to get scar tissue underneath where the, the injection site was. So it like, you don't see a physical scar on the top of the skin, but like you, you could see the bump of where the insertions of that was. So we've been trying to work away that and that's coming down. And so that when she smiles, there's no little bump on her face. And it's just so incredible. And uh, it helps to relax facial tension. So if you think about where those wrinklings are, it's the, the places where you make your facial expressions. And what we talk about is that lines are basically sharing with the world your emotional landscape, right? So for example, this is a very common one, the 11s or that one right between the brows. And it can it's an expression of, gosh, like retention of emotions and anger. So it's a way of letting it go. We can't deny ourselves of our emotions. It's there, but how do we soften it? So acupuncture is a way to help release the anxiety states or um, helps to release the emotions that can be compartmentalized within the body. And it's a really nice, subtle and profound way to release them. It's natural. It's non-invasive. There's no chemical and certainly no surgery. And we're more interested in treating the root cause of a person because when we're super stressed, it gets reflected on the face. When we are in pain, it gets reflected on the face. Do you not see that? Or, you know, even with the uh, lifestyle choices, like with smoking and, and drinking, it can be seen on the face. Oh, for sure. So with smoking, you'll often see more of the lines kind of around the mouth just from this action, like the actual action the of sucking. puckering your lips, right? Yeah. Um, and then I think that, you know, genetically, there's the factors, like I mentioned, with aging. So some people... Um, you know, their collagen might be not produced the same rate as somebody else. And regardless of the lifestyle choices that they kept, um, nutrition wise, we know that uh, advanced glycosylated um, endpoints will age you. So AGE will age you. So sugar and processed foods, um, unhealthy oils, uh, whereas on the opposite end, you know, eating whole grains and underground root vegetables for car healthy carbohydrates can help you age more gracefully. So people with type 2 diabetes, for example, if it's unregulated or unmanaged, I should say that it might, it will age the skin as well because of those uh, ages, AGE, advanced glycosylated endpoints. Um, and when I used to do facial acupuncture in patients, because I used to do that when I was actually physically in office and doing acupuncture, because back in the day, I did the facial acupuncture course as well. Um, I actually never mentioned that to you, Mary. No. So I, I am a big fan. I just don't do it for patients anymore. I would often do it for patients even a complementary to, for example, other treatments they had chosen because they wanted to delay perhaps, you know, their next Botox treatment, or they were just wanting to do the combination of the holistic acupuncture approach with the microneedles. And then um, in addition to, um, you know, the medicated treatments. So um, I, one patient in particular, I remember her saying, you know, um, although I'm okay with the, the, you know, the Botox that she would get in the forest. She's like, I just want to have the expression a little bit more. And uh, what, what I found interesting about getting Botox is that after you get enough needles, because you've retrained your facial, facial muscle, muscles, it's actually hard to get that expression back, even if you, so allowing you to delay getting the treatments. But the, the, the concern is, and don't, don't think that, that this is 
a judgment or anything on, you know, people's choice to do Botox is that, um, my opinion of it is that sometimes when people do it too young or just even at some points is that because of that lack of emotion, it almost ages people a little bit. Like we're trying to do the anti-aging thing and it almost, and maybe not everybody feels this, this is a subjective um, kind of opinion, but it almost ages people a little bit when they go go for the Botox. Whereas if you're doing like the microneedling and things that build collagen, you can still see the subtle line, which is normal for your age. And you just age gracefully. Like that's my opinion. So I hope you don't mind no. me sharing because uh, I don't want to offend anybody. Like, and if no. you just choose to do Botox, then you yeah. know it, that's totally, you know, your kind of choice in it. And like, I'm sure that you make it um, work for you and you're beautiful no matter what your choice is. So, and you, what really matters is how you look at yourself in the mirror and, and what you say to yourself yes. at the end of the day, right? Well, you know, that's really, really important that you said this because I had this conversation with Eleanor, our massage therapist, and she was saying, you know, when we do Botox, what actually you're doing is you're stopping the muscles from moving. And when you paralyze those muscles, you're not exercising them. Right. So it's like with any other body muscles, like, don't we need to exercise them to keep them vital and strong and healthy? Well, so I would think the other muscles around, right? So we can't just like freeze just this muscle, like the whole forehead. And then my concern more is that unfortunately, when you do freeze this, the eyebrows sometimes retract and it just looks a little bit off. So, oh my gosh, yes. And I noticed? had a patient a complain bit, yeah. just about that mm -hmm. as well. She says, Mary, I think yeah. I need to stop because I find that when I do the Botox, now my other muscles are over firing and then I'm right. looking funny. I'm looking yes. mean. Like she's yeah. like, I'm looking like I'm angry all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Right. So, yeah. so it's like finding this balance of like making sure that you are, you know, doing, putting sunscreen on to slow down the aging and like hydrating. So key, drink tons of water so that you don't lose, like it's not like dehydrated skin. And then omega threes, nutrition wise, avoid the junk food, you know, and choose the whole foods as much as you can. And then uh, go for the facial acupuncture, but do the holistic acupuncture too, not just facial acupuncture, in my opinion, because often what's aging people quicker is stress. So like it's, it's, it's not only facial acupuncture needles you're putting in, right, Mary, when you're doing, you're also doing some systemic treatment in addition to that and maybe some gua sha. Can you talk to that a bit? Yes. Well, absolutely. Because, and, and you hit the nail on the head because when people come for skin, I always say, we always say it's like, well, it's not just about the skin. It's like, you're in, it's like, let's help your beauty from the inside out. Let's be, have, be vital and healthy from the inside out. So it's literally treating the root cause and that requires us to use points all through the body. And so you may come in and we discover that there's digestive issues. It's like, well, we actually have to address that because that, that gets reflected on the skin. And I mentioned earlier, it's like, gosh, like if I have pain, well, definitely that's going to be reflected on the face. So we need to handle all of it. And yes, oh, I was going to say in Chinese medicine, what, like, cause I don't do the acupuncture anymore and now I'm forgetting, but like what <laughs> mists up to the skin? Like what organ are you mostly treating? Like that mists up to the skin or is it not like, oh, isn't it the lungs or like, so yeah, the, sorry. The, while sounds... we look at the lung, you look at mm -hmm. the heart and kidney, to be yeah. honest, like I'm going to actually say all the organ yeah. systems needs okay. to be in balance. Because mm -hmm. one affects everything else. So you got to figure out which one's like the yeah. root So what cause. is the, pre the predominant thing? And mm -hmm. even when we look at facial wrinkles, depending on which the wrinkles are, it's reflected of different organ systems. But that's beyond what our conversation today. Mm -hmm. That might be an interesting one mm -hmm. to cover like facial reflexology diagnosis another time. Mm -hmm. But yes, there's different parts of the face that reflect different imbalances in the body. So that's for acupuncturists to know. So at the end of the day, you're going to need to find someone that really is well-versed in doing facial acupuncture that is treating the root cause and not just someone that does what I call the symptomatic cook cookbook approach. And second to that, you can totally do it alongside um, Botox and filler. So by the way, neither Tanya and I are like saying anything negative mm -hmm. about what people choose to do in the medical treatments, but we're just speaking about certain facts, right? Yeah. Fact is Botox and filler does nothing for facial, like a, a cellular regeneration. It's not about regeneration. It's about freezing and filling. 
<laughs> Some treatments might, and like in the one, the uh, Fraxel and laser, so pulse laser, um, they will, I don't know the, the uh, medical terminology around it, so I'm going to go lame in here, but they can regenerate the skin. Um, sometimes there's downtime and sometimes for some people, it doesn't work. So you have to figure out if it's appropriate for your skin type because sometimes it makes it worse. The dark spots yes. come out more. I was lucky enough to have my dark spots kind of go away, but a lot of people, uh, you'd have to go get an, a, you know, a direct opinion on the dark spots. And it, does facial acupuncture, I mean, I've never treated patients for uh, dark spots, but is there a um, solution for that with acupuncture or would that be more the topical treatments? So and I, I think it would be both. And what we know now is that uh, when we talk about, you m mentioned it earlier, like a microneedling approach, it used to be that people, when they did microneedling, they made people bleed because they wanted down to the epidermal layer. But what they're finding in through research is that actually creating that micro trauma at the top of the skin without having to make a person bleed will make enough. Um, it's like being that, um, what, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Okay, it doesn't matter. But by just doing that micro trauma near the surface of the, of the skin will start the, and initiate the healing and initiate production of collagen and elastin. And what we do, like at Alive, we combine it with gua sha, we combine it with cupping, all part of ancient tradition in Chinese medicine. By the way, China is known for like, well, maybe all countries, but I'm thinking China in particular, where longevity is a big deal. So, you know, and then part of the longevity is like looking beautiful and looking beautiful is through the skin. So they've been developing this for thousands of years. And so cupping is another approach where you literally take a suction cup that is for like they're smaller ones for the face. It's not meant for bruising. Okay. For the face, you, you, put it towards the skin. And when you suck and release, create that suction, you're stimulating energy, right? And, and you're allowing muscles to release from tension and you're promoting the body's healing response. So these are specialized cupping. So basically the cupping will help to improve the appearance of the face, helps reduce the appearance of fine lines, wrinkles, even acne scars, and uh, promotes a more youthful complexion. Now, gua sha, it's a, basically a tool, and it's generally like a, a nephrite jade, which is quite cooling. So it's, it has a natural anti-inflammatory property. And at Alive, we will do the acupuncture first, and then we do the cupping, and then we do the gua sha. And the Gua sha, basically you slide along the skin, the face and the neck, maybe a little bit of the um, chest. And it's on a smooth edge tool that we put on these areas to improve circulation of the blood. Again, releases muscle tension, promotes lymphatic drainage, which is by the neck. And what I love about this, and I forget who told me, but it's like if we look at our face like a flower and the body and the neck more like the stem of the flower. It's like, well, we can't just, you know, spritz the face and put cream on. There has to be a connect, right? The, the stem needs to supply good nutrients to the face. And as well as we need to drain the junk that accumulates. And Gua sha, because it's friction-based, so you uh, talked about darker lines or darker skin pigmentation. So that friction can help lift that up. It can partly exfoliate, but we don't do it really that. And But the other piece that's super important is that it can help you absorb whatever your skin products are um, way better along with the acupuncture, if that makes sense. Meaning like if you have a little bit of sloughing or the fibroblasts are kind of g regenerating, like your the cupping helps you resorb that, like you kind of... So the gua sha mm -hmm. helps because it's there's some friction based, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so it can uh, help you absorb the, 
let's say the skin products that you're okay. using every day. Oh, to help you the absorb skin it products. I thought you meant like it the happens. products of like the process or something. Oh, yeah. That's what, yeah, well, yeah. Are, that's Probably good, that too. But, but, mm-hmm. but um, like, because what happens is if people don't exfoliate appropriately, and unfortunately, a lot of things can be actually too abrasive and you can make micro scarring on the, uh, on the face if you do uh, abrasive products. So this is actually a nice way to kind of stimulate the skin so you absorb your skin products better versus just coating it on, coating it on, and your body's not like drinking it up. And what also it can do is helps to reduce puffiness. It promotes that healthier glow. And I see it all the time. It's really awesome. So at the end of the day, acupuncture, gua sha, cupping that we utilize together is a great alternative, a great adjunct to medicalized care. So I hope that this serves you well. And by the way, I don't know about you, Tanya, but we see lots of women that are at a younger age, in their 20s even, doing doing the Botox and fillers. So if you're more inclined to do something natural, this is a great, great resource. This is a great alternative for you. So call us at Alive so that you can get more information because as Tanya mentioned, and you're not the first one to have said this. I've had also other patients who have said, gosh, like I've seen people that are younger doing it, but somehow when they do it, it makes them look older because we expected these kinds of treatments to be done on older people. So then right. you just automatically assume that they're older. And meanwhile, they're in their 20s. Right. When we're in our 20s, we make abundant estrogen and we have the ability to maintain healthy, youthful skin naturally. And you can get guidance with your you know, nutrition and movement and get acupuncture way better, healthier, healthier alternative to help you age gracefully. And if you were going to be pursuing, you know, injectables like Botox or fillers um, in conjunction with or separately, you know, wait until you're, you know, older so that you don't have those structural changes. Let yourself age gracefully if you can. Um, you know, I think that it's it's important to consider that you're gorgeous as you are. And when, you know, even in your 50s, when your estrogen drops off, right, when you when you lose your periods, you lose your estrogen, your that's the single most endogenous factor, the decline in estrogen as to why our collagen isn't produced by our fibroblasts. It's the lack of estrogen in our 50s. So that's, you know, when women are kind of starting to turn to it, or maybe their late 40s when they're having, you know, we can talk about this in other size, you know, episode, but the loop cycles where, um, you know, there's declining estrogen, we're releasing eggs that might not have as much estrogen or progesterone. So the hormones that influence. So and when you're really young, yeah, go for acupuncture and that it's like a holistic approach, right? You're like intentionally getting these treatments to reduce your stress and gua sha acupuncture for the face and, and then, you know, make nutritional lifestyle changes and reduce your stress and you'll find that your skin's glowing, right? Mm-hmm. And then feel better inside. Um, and your perception of your face is better too, because part of the issue is sometimes we are looking to social media and, you know, when you have those, like you take pictures and there's filters all the time, you know, and, and, uh, like, or there's, um, you get, you get to choose filters. And I've, I've heard some people say they wish like they look like their filtered version. I'm like, no, <laughs> like, and it starts, it's younger and younger. Like just, uh, it's because of social media. I think yes. it's really influencing things. So, you know, I think always have the intention to like, look at the bigger picture and, um, you know, not just targeted treatment because that's not going to change how you see yourself. And uh, Dr. Um, uh, Maxwell Smith talks about that. Like he's a cosmetic surgeon and he wrote that book, Psycho Cybernetics. We've talked about this before and, you know, like the psychology behind even like, you know, plastic surgery and stuff. And some people are getting surgeries when they're young too. So that's a whole other episode. But I think for now, um, really highly strongly consider facial acupuncture and gua sha because there's evidence behind that combined with nutrition and lifestyle changes because those are all the things that influence like the lifestyle changes are what can influence your genetics and your skin and how you age 
So if you like all the content that we're sharing, please like, subscribe, share, because this is a really important conversation. And we're here for you so that you can make the best choice for yourself. This is not intended as medical advice, but at the same time, we would love for you to choose what's best for you and not fall into the pit of Snapchat dysmorphia, where you subscribe to thinking that, gosh, I need to look like a cartoon character. We don't want that. We want you to really surrender to the beautiful you as you are. And, you know, why not enhance it with skincare and acupuncture, cupping gua sha. So reach out to us at aliveholistichealth.ca and you can uh, book your appointment and see how it fits for you in your life.